What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Friday night. It is party night. For some of the folks out there, definitely not for me. I'm not into partying tonight. <laughs> October 28th, 2022. It is about 8.58 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.0 earthquake here along the big island of Hawaii. About 32 kilometers deep. Pretty deep earthquake out there. All right, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the map here. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off on the big island with that earthquake out there. 32 kilometers deep for a 2.0 from the USGS. Very typical along this region of the big island uh, to see that type of uh, earthquake there. Down there, about 32 kilometers deep or so. Sometimes a little bit deeper. Uh, looking up north here towards Mauna Loa, we are seeing a little, little bit of activity ramping up, including one here within the last hour, a 1.8 at about uh, negative 1.9 kilometers deep. Uh, again, watching this area pretty closely because we are seeing some uh, swarming activity here over the past couple months, indicating some magma movement underneath the uh, land here. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the west coast here of the United States. We got one earthquake here outside of San Jose. Uh, looks like that is right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault Zone near uh, Portola Valley, 8.6 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Kind of in an odd area. We don't see too many earthquakes here specifically within this region, uh, kind of on the eastern side of the Santa Cruz Mountains area. But uh, it is kind of lighting up tonight with one earthquake. Further down the line, a little bit of activity across the Calaveras Fault Zone. Stretching across the San Andreas Fault here. Here's that earthquake activity earlier. Uh, along this uh, little small fault system here. Just east of the Calaveras Fault Zone. Most of the activity there kicking off. Earlier this morning, nothing uh, throughout the afternoon or evening time frame. A little spotty activity throughout the uh, the rest of the San Andreas Fault, a creeping section, so to speak. A couple small microquakes out there. Um, also outside of the um, what do we got? Hanford area looks like Riverdale, Lemoore, a 2.2 out here, kind of out in the valley area. San Joaquin Valley, normally we don't see too much earthquake activity out here, right? Kind of well away from the plate boundary. It is down there at about 15 kilometers deep for a 2.2. Uh, no specific fault zones indicated here on the map. There is the Great Valley Thrust Fault Zone that um, pretty much is listed up along the uh, west side of the Sacramento Valley, the San Joaquin Valley and a little bit further south, but uh, that earthquake down there at about 15 kilometers deep. Long Valley Super Volcano. Haven't really seen too much activity um, today. Looks like most of that was earlier this morning time frame, uh, just outside of the Mammoth Lakes area. Go ahead and check out the rest of the area. A little spotty throughout Ridgecrest. Not a whole lot going on across the Garlock Fault uh, until you get here around the Fraser Park area. Got a 1.9, 2.4, and a uh, uh, quarry blast well east of here. But uh, this is kind of in the intersection here, so to speak, of a couple different major fault systems, including a major fault boundary. Plate boundary, I should say. Uh, the San Andreas Fault here. North American Plate and Pacific Plate Boundary. Along with the Garlock Fault and a couple other fault systems listed out here on the map. So, uh, I mean, when you get into specifics like this, uh, a lot of movement here and there, going this way and that way, uh, that can only make for a very complicated uh, area of forecasting um, in terms of potential earthquake activity but today uh, a 2.4 the largest earthquake in that little sequence of uh, of activity 
1.0 off the San Andreas Fault here, north of the Desert Hot Springs area. We not really seen any ter uh, any major swarming activity across the region here. Um, on the Elsador Fault system, this activity kicked off earlier this afternoon. Kind of looks like it killed off, died off there uh, about six or seven o'clock this afternoon, early evening time period. Uh, we were watching a little bit of swarming activity here across the region, Highway 76 area. Um, throughout the Intermountain West region and Yellowstone, only a couple earthquakes there. Let's go ahead and check out this activity across Yellowstone real quick and see what we got. And there's a whole lot of nothingness out there. Uh, in fact, it looks like most of the swarming has come to a complete halt there around Yellowstone uh, in fact, just earlier uh, this evening time frame, looks like a little small uh, activity of earthquakes there across the area of Yellowstone. But these are very, very small earthquakes and much smaller than all of the earthquakes we've seen uh, over the past couple months here. So looks like a die down there of the Yellowstone activity. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oklahoma, Texas. Not a whole lot going on across the area. No major swarms to report. Uh, one earthquake earlier this morning around the, uh, uh, looks like north of Yorktown, Texas, near Smiley, uh, Texas area. That was about it. Uh, some activity further west around Midland and the Pecos, Texas area. Eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Uh, what do we got for the chilly area so what do you guys see here so we got 13 earthquakes of one magnitude looks to be a 5.9 the largest so far in the sequence of earthquakes 5.8 and uh quite a few other fours in there as well so this type of activity folks is what we see prior to a much, much larger earthquake. It started off, um, it looks like, with a 4.9, and it's been variating, so to speak, uh, up and down the magnitude scale, up to a 5.9 so far in this area. But look at this here. We got some deeper earthquake activity, followed up by much more shallower earthquake activity upstream. Look at that. This is very visible. And there's no need for a drawing here on this map. Deeper activity here within this region, followed up by much more shallower earthquake activity. This could be setting up here for a pretty large earthquake um, in the area of South America along the Peru-Chile Trench, uh, just off the coast of Peru. So watch this closely, folks. Um, the latest, uh, let's see what we got for at least a, uh, the latest earthquake here. Uh, looks like a 4.5 within this area of the swarming. But notice the depths here. Uh, variable from down to the deepest, about 64 kilometers deep, to uh, the default level of about 10 kilometers deep here along this area. That's a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity um, across the region there. And... Um, yeah, a couple of these earthquakes occurred throughout the evening time tonight. 5.9 the largest so far. 5.8 the largest aftershock. But man, this is, uh, I think these are all four shocks, folks. So watch this area along the Peru region pretty closely. I mean, not too often, guys, do we see this type of activity kicking up here um, in a major, major subduction zone area. And regionally, this area has been pretty quiet, technically speaking, over the past few months. Um, but man, when, when you see something like that, you cannot ignore it. So watch the South America region. In fact, uh, earthquake watch here for the Peru-Chile Trench. Uh, something much larger possible for that area coming up really soon, really soon. Along the Big Island, folks, a uh, little activity out here along our deeper areas. 
of the Mauna Loa area. This is kind of in the swarming area that we've seen over the past couple months or so. Uh, some of this activity about 3.5 kilometers deep, indicating some magma movement upstream towards the, uh, well, the lava tubes, so to speak, the magma chamber around the Mauna Loa area. This thing's getting ready, folks. It's definitely recharging, and I think Mauna Loa will be on the list here of Earth, or uh, at least eruptive volcanoes pretty soon. And uh, I want to go out there. I, I definitely want to go out there and um, video this firsthand. Um, so that is on my list. I'm trying to trying to watch that pretty closely along with the rest of my schedule. Some earthquake activity around Pahala 2.0 along with uh, regular, regular deep earthquake activity around the region. But uh, watch Mauna Loa, folks. It's been a while. 1984 is a while ago. Earthquake activity across Alaska, Western Pacific, uh, no major uptick in movement. Some of this activity here from earlier this afternoon and uh, late afternoon. It looks like a 5.0 in the Tonga area. But man, things are really, really ramping up here across the South America region. So watch that pretty closely. Uh, what do we got here off the San Andreas Fault? We got a did we pick that one up at 2.1? Yes, we did. All right, let's see what we got for trimmer activity tonight across the Cascadia. One of my favorite topics out here. Things are kind of mellowing down. 29 epicenters, mostly uh, outside of Seattle and the Medford area. But still within those two lo uh, two locations, a uh, very uh, active trimmer areas. But it appears it's calming down tonight. Solar weather activity. Yes, it's amplified. Yes, there is potential up there at the higher latitudes. We are forecasting a G1 class storm um, over the next couple nights or so. Kind of a little bit early arrival for some of this high speed uh, solar charge particles here across the earth, across the uh, magnetic field. KP index of about four over the last couple hours, indicating some uh, heightened activity across the northern regions. Uh, so up your, if you're up there around Canada, Greenland, Iceland, um, I think you guys have a very good chance of some aurora possibilities. No major solar flare threat uh, potential right now. But currently watching that pretty closely. Current solar wind conditions here. Um, over the area. Oh, what do we do here? Let's go back here to a little bit more simplified chart. Uh, of course, we have seen a little bit early arrival of the coronal hole. High-speed solar wind data, got speed kicking up, density kind of kicking up as well, along with a southward tilt here of the BZ component, allowing a little bit more solar wind stream to flow in uh, than expected. So we could see uh, some conditions elevated, a little bit more possible than the G1 class storms con uh, conditions here forecasted. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. Again, be very cautious. Um, I think we need to watch the South America region here pretty closely. And in fact, I am going to issue an earthquake watch there for the South America region. Uh, just off the coast, again, of um, uh, Peru, right? Just off the coast of Peru, along the uh, Peru-Chile Trench. A lot of times, uh, you know, swarming activity in the large magnitude department like that can be a prelude, a foreshock, so to speak, of some much larger activity. And that's kind of what it's looking like there. 5.9, 5.8, quite a few fives and fours. Yes, uh, that's, uh, that would be hard to ignore. So definitely uh, pay attention out there around the South America area. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there. Friday night, a lot of crazy stuff going on out there in the world. Please stay sane, 
Stay safe. We will chat you guys very soon. Peace out.